بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, This is a short introduction uh, to this online course on المهند على المفند uh, which is available at assubah.com at this link. Uh, so for those who are not so familiar with this uh, text, Al-Muhannad ala al-Mufannad, it is a short book uh, written by Allama Khalil Ahmad Saharanpuri. Allama Khalil Ahmad Saharanpuri, rahimahullah. With the title Al Muhannad Al Al Mufannad, it also has an alternative title, uh, At Tasdiqat Li Dafa'it Talbisat. So the author is quite well known, uh, especially for his commentary, his sharh on Sunan Abi Dawood, Badlul Majhud. So this is a very widely used resource and commentary on Sunan Abi Dawood in Arabic. The author, Rahimahullah, was born in 1852 in uh, British India, and he passed away in 1927 uh, in Medina Munawwara. And he was a product and one of the main uh, exponents and representatives of the famous Madrasa of Deoband. So this Madrasa of Deoband was found in this North Indian uh, city in 1866. And one of the founders was in fact, Allama Khalid Ahmed Saranpuri's uncle. Uh, his maternal uncle was one of the founders of Darul Ulum Deoband. And Allama Khalid Ahmed Saranpuri studied in Deoband for a short while. And then he studied in an affiliate school, uh, Mazahir al-Ulum. And then later on in life, he taught in Darun Deoband and also mainly in the affiliate school of Mazahir al-Ulum. Deoband had many branches, many affiliate schools throughout uh, the subcontinent and in fact, throughout uh, the entire world. So it's uh, people who are familiar with uh, Ulum, with uh, Islamic sciences, they would generally have heard of uh, the Madrasa of Deoband and some, at least some of the ulama that belong to that Madrasa and some of the uh, output, the academic output uh, from those ulama. So Al-Muhannad Al-Mufannad was <clears throat> a text written by this uh, author, uh, Rahimahullah, in the year 1907. So it was written in the year 1907. And well, the text was written in the year 1907. And then the author and one of his students uh, collected some endorsements and some signatures from a number of scholars, both in the subcontinent and outside of the subcontinent. And then this was published uh, some years later at about the year 1915, that was when you had the first edition of the book. And uh, then you had many, many editions after that. Right, so this is the text, Al-Muhannad al Mufannad, and it has a background, a, a historical context, uh, which uh, spurred, which, or which was the impetus for why it was Written. So Allama Khalil Masanaburi was writing, yes, uh, in his capacity as a scholar, but also uh, as a representative in a way of this school, this, this madrasa uh, that, that was founded in Deoband and had spread quite uh, widely, uh, the, as in the, the um, educational program and the affiliate madrasas that had spread very widely. He was one of the main representatives at that time of that school, of, of the founders, of the leading um, scholars of that school. Uh, he was one of their uh, prominent successors in, in that period. Hence, 
he was selected to represent the, the school because there was this, uh, these allegations and, and this spate of allegations. In fact, you could say uh, an entire uh, library of, of misinformation uh, was, was being manufactured uh, against uh, these ulama of, of the urban. So Allah uh, what he did in this text was to present brief answers and to present briefly what is the methodology of these ulama? What is the methodology of the ulama of Durban? Uh, do they deviate from the mainstream Ahlul Sunnah, the mainstream Aqida schools, the mainstream fiqh schools? The answer is no. Uh, they adhere to them, they uh, preserve them, they uh, defend uh, these schools. So they are nothing new. Rather, they are a a uh, group of scholars who saw a need to, uh, to overcome the, the prevalence of ignorance and jahala that had spread throughout the, uh, the, the subcontinent. And hence they uh, came up with this educational reform movement, <clears throat> right? So, so uh, the, the format of this course is that, we, that there's a uh, series of sessions, introductory sessions, contextualizing the whole book, right? Because it, it is a place in a historical context and there's a deeper history and, and a more immediate uh, series of events that led to it having to be written. So we look at that context because the content of the book really is difficult to uh, understand without looking at that context. So there's several sessions on that. And of course, regarding the uh, author, Allama Khulam Salam there's um, there's there's a detailed biography of, of the author as well. And then uh, the format that is followed is, uh, um, just going through the text, the Arabic text, plus a translation and plus a detailed discussion and commentary of the issues uh, that are brought up, right? So, so the text is used because a, a lot of the text, not all of it, but a lot of the text is quite basic. Um, one particular question is quite detailed or one or two particular questions that are quite detailed, but generally the text is quite basic. Uh, hence, the, it's, it's used more as a springboard for detailed discussion uh, on certain uh, key issues of controversy, of methodology. Right, so uh, the, the course is designed for, for students of Dean. So it's not for complete beginners, but but somebody who has studied um, uh, studied Deen, Islamic studies to to some degree and is and is familiar with some of these issues, they should be able to follow. Even if they don't have, they don't have to be an alim or a graduate from madrasa. Uh, but even if, if, as long as they have some grasp of these uh, issues, uh, because the the texts will be. Uh, the Arabic text or the Urdu, or the Urdu text, all of that will be uh, translated. Uh, who are looking for an objective analysis of the Madrasa of Deoband. Many people want to know what is Deoband, what is a Deobandi, right? The, the, this is something that a lot of people want to know, right? So, uh, so, so an objective analysis of the Madrasa of Deoband, the key education reform movement from the 19th century British, in, British India, and uh, instrumental in religious and social dy dynamics of Sunni Muslims, not just in the subcontinent, uh, but throughout the world, right? And, and this is, this is self-evident. Uh, people who encounter uh, or who enter the field of Islamic studies, it's uh, wherever they're studying, wherever in the world they're studying, in uh, whichever place of the world, they will encounter some of the output of the ulama of Durban. So it's worth learning about this madrasa 
and who uh, these scholars are. And removing the fog of mis misconception and misinformation, because there is, unfortunately, as I said, uh, there, there, there's, there's uh, um, an industry almost of misinformation that was there right from the onset, right from the outset, uh, against these ulama. So answers to common allegations against the leading scholars and founders of the Madrasa of Dirband, and those looking for a detailed key areas of controversy and methodology, like the Sifat of Allah Ta'ala, right? like the Sifat Khabariya, and where you have uh, certain groups, the Mushabbiha, uh, or the literalists who understand it in a certain way, and what's the correct understanding there. So there's detailed discussion on that. Uh, the Aqidah schools of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the Ash'aris and the Maturidis, a detailed look into those schools. Uh, taqlid and Madhub, following a Madhab, Bid'ah, uh, Tasawwuf, Istighatha, etc. So these are some of the aims of, of the course. Understand why and how the school of Deoband was founded. What does it mean to be, quote unquote, uh, Deobandi? So obviously Deobandi originally primarily just meant somebody who is a graduate of the school, uh, the Madrasa of Deoband, or one of its affiliate school schools, or somebody who is associate, so associated with those ulama and, and studies with them or admires them. Uh, but then it, it, it grew into a bit of a, a wider, had a bit of a wider sense to it. So all of that is explored uh, in some detail in the course. So understand key differences between Deobandis and Berelwis and why they exist. So the, so the Berelwis are key uh, to understanding the context of uh, al muhannad right? So all of that will be uh, clear uh, in, in, in the course, inshallah. So understand the success of the Madrasa of Deoband in producing ulama, awliya, academic outputs and popular movements. Understand the methodology of the scholars of Deoband, uh, as in uh, what was their uh, vision, what was their aim. Uh, the, so it's preserving the Sunni orthodoxy in Aqidah, Fiqh and Tasawwuf and doing that through the medium of learning, of ilm, of education. Uh, and resisting the extremes of ifrat and tafrit. So, so, so resisting the extremes of uh, excesses and, and negligence. So, so that will be clear in several of the issues that are discussed in the course. Understand certain common allegations leveled at the leading scholars of their bund and the responses to them. Key discussions. Ash'aris and Maturidis as representatives as representative schools of the Ahlul Sunnah, uh, Taqlid and uh, Tamadhub, uh, Tasawwuf. So all of these are discussed in quite some depth in the course. Uh, Muhammad Yandir Wahhab and the Wahhabi school, right? Uh, so so this, this uh, school is looked at objectively again in, in, the, in the course and the differences with the school of Deoband how and how Wahhabis are viewed by the ulama of Deoband, whether positively or negatively, and, and what is the uh, general view of the ulama of Deoband towards uh, the, this school. Uh, background to al muhannad uh, both the deeper history and the more immediate events leading to its writer. Uh, a biography of the author, Allah Muhaddith Khalil Ahmed Sahanguri, rahimahullah, Right, al muhannad is a key foundational text of the early school of Deoband and its signatories. So there's a brief, so, so there's the section on the signatories and the endorsements, there isn't a, that's not read as a text, but there's a brief overview uh, of that. Shah Ismail Shaheed and his Taqwiyatul Iman. Right, so this is one of the key topics under discussion and divergent views of the ulama of Deoband on Taqwiyatul Iman. Elaboration of Maulana Muhammad Qasim Nanotui's ex exegesis, exegesis uh, of Khatamun Nabiyin and support for it from the earlier scholars and response to the distortion of his views by detractors. So there's, there's uh, two detailed sessions on just this. So th this uh, issue of um, Maulana Muhammad Qasim Nanotui's uh, tafsir, 
uh, of the ayah on Khatam al nabiyyin and uh, the issue that is commonly known as quote unquote in Qanul Kidm. These are the two most, uh, you could say, sensitive and technical issues under discussion in the course, right? And uh, there's detailed exploration of the original sources. We will look at the, the writings of Mona Muhammad Qasim Nanotui, who is one of the main founders of Darul Ulum Deoband, not just his Tahzir al Nas, which is the most detailed uh, work, uh, but, but his other works as well, like Tanwir al Libras, uh, Ajwiba al Ba'in, where, where he discusses uh, his, his Tafsir, basically, and how others, how detractors have misconstrued what he has said. Right? So there's a detailed analysis of, of this. And response to allegations against Muhammad Khayyam his his uh, some of the passages from his Barahi Naqati'ah, Mawlana Muhammad Rashid, Mawlana Rashid Ahmed Gangohi, and Mawlana Ashraf Ali al uh, his, his Hifz al-Iman, and some of the, again, misrepresentations of some of the passages uh, from that. Ahmad Ida Khan al and the Barelwi school, Right, so there's some examination of the Brelwi school. Uh, criterion for identifying bid'ah in practice, right? As a, you know, bid'ah i'tiqadiyah, uh, there's bid'ah in, in belief, and then there's bid'ah in, in practice as well. And there's some uh, case studies like the Mawlid, the Qiyam, uh, the Adhan after the Dafan, after the burial. So there's a detailed uh, discussion on the criterion for bid'ah and how people who uh, support certain practices which are evidently bid'ah, how they do that and, and what, the, um, what, what the problems are with their arguments. Ilm al ghaib and the knowledge of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so this is another key discussion, and this issue of what's known as imkan al -kidh. those who are not familiar with it, it will be discussed, it is discussed in, in the course, uh, and those who are familiar with it, there's an extensive exploration of this uh, issue. And Qadiani's, again, an, a, 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 very, a, de a somewhat detailed uh, look at this group because they are, uh, there is a question, or, or well, there is a, a discussion on them uh, in Al Muhannad, Mirza Qulam Ahmad Qadiani. In fact, uh, Al Muhannad was written during the lifetime of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiyani. So, so there's a detailed or somewhat detailed uh, look at um, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiyani and his movement, uh, which they refer to as uh, the Ahmadis. And the issue of takfir. So approximately 50 hours of content, uh, 40 sessions that are all labeled so, so each of the sessions are annotated and labeled. So if somebody wants to uh, review a certain topic, they can do that uh, even without having to follow the entire course from the beginning. Right, there's a great amount of detail, uh, objective and, and critical, right? So, so uh, the, the uh, text Al-Muhannad, there, there, there are certain parts where there's room for criticism and, and those are looked at uh, objectively and engages with responses to Al-Muhannad, extensive citations from original sources, right? So original sources are used as opposed to uh, secondary uh, uh, source material. Accessible and easy to follow and understand, right? So it's not overly technical. So it will start from a, a elementary uh, basic level and, and build up so that everybody who has a basic grasp uh, of these issues can follow, right? So it's not only aimed at uh, the very advanced uh, students or um, scholars. Al Shihab al Thaqib of Mawlana Hussein al Madani, Rahimahullah, is an important text written in the year 1910. In, in Urdu, right? So Muhammad is in Arabic, Shihab al is in Urdu and much more detailed. 
And this is treated as a companion book to Al-Muhannad and citations from it are uh, provided throughout the course. Biographical information on scholars whose opinions and, and words are cited in the book, right? So this is a, a brief um, uh, presentation on uh, this uh, online course. Uh, Allah make it a source of, of benefit and Allah accept the efforts of the organizers uh, of the course. Okay, Jazakumullah khayran. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta fastaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.